Hi, welcome to 2020 Tasty Treats. We're doing uh, 20 different treats this year, uh, or, or patterns, or topics if you like, um, through the website, through gourmetquilter.com. Uh, there's more information on the website. So I'm just starting the second one of our series in the applique things. So this is the trees applique. So there's going to be 20 different trees. They're kind of a little bit folk hearty, light hearted, not especially realistic, I have to say. These are the kinds of trees that grow in my mind. So we're just going to be going through each applique and I'll just show you each applique. Much of it's kind of similar in the way that the process is done, but I just thought it's always nice to see people doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that. So I've cut out all my background. So if you've purchased the pattern from gourmetquilter.com for the trees applique, you should already have um, some of the pattern, well, part one, block one. We're doing a tree, so there's a small image of the finished one, but you do get this coloured image here um, with your part one so that you can see what I'm doing. And the colours may vary, of course. So I think it's kind of fun to do, so I'm suggesting that you trace onto a fusible web and then you iron to the back of your fabric and then cut your shapes out. So I've already gone ahead and done all that side of things, ready for the applique. And I've cut all my block sizes out, my backgrounds, they're going to be a variety of sizes, so they could be used for any number of things. They don't all have to go into the one project. You may not want a tree quilt. You might want a quilt that has all sorts of other things and a tree in it. So you can use a tree from here. So I'm using, when I'm doing free motion applique, so I'm doing a fused raw edge applique. I've set my sewing machine up to do the free motion sewing, so I've dropped the feed teeth, I've put a free motion foot on, and I've, I'm also going to use a stabiliser behind because when you do free motion it tends to want to sort of scrunch your fabric a little bit. So you can use, you could use a starch perhaps, but I suggest some sort of a stabiliser behind. I'm using a lightweight cotton batting because that works really well for me. It's just slightly larger than my block and then I'll be fusing onto that and stitching through the batting as well. And that will help it sit nicely with the free motion side of things. So I've gone ahead, I've traced my shapes, I've cut them out. Now I've just got to pull the paper off uh, the back of the fusible web and put them down. So the pieces will be numbered in some sort of an order. So starting with number one is because you don't necessarily have to have just the one down. You've got to position everything so that things will fit on your background. But one goes underneath number two and underneath number three if there's layers. So that's the reason for the numbering so that you know that things where things sit because we want to keep a little bit of an eye on perspective because you don't really want a tree trunk sat on top of the tree if it should be behind the tree those sorts of things or behind some of the leaves or whatever that is so I'm just going to start peeling off so now that because this is a fairly um, symmetrical tree that we're doing here I'm just going to finger press a center line on my background fabric so that I know more or less where the middle is and then I can start positioning my piece is on. So this is piece number one, the tree trunk. Um, the other thing I should mention too on these, even especially the little smaller blocks, is just to keep an eye on the fact that you're going to be losing a quarter of an inch all the way around. So you want to make sure that you've allowed for that to disappear if you're going to sew it into something else. So we've got a little tree trunk and then we've got some of my trunks a little bit high already. And come down a touch because the top of the tree was going to go off the top of the block and just make sure that you've got enough either side that it's sitting fairly well and now I have to say that tree trunks are not all central to their foliage some trees lean one way maybe the wind's been blowing who knows and then there's these little fun little triangle shapes just to give it a little bit of life this nice little tree they, they could be flowers it could be a blossom of some sort and they're kind of fairly randomly placed on this tree. So I'm just going to position everything on here and then I'm going to iron them in place and then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and start doing some sewing on it. Could be better than that. Could have peeled the paper off sooner maybe. Just move them around a bit. So as I said, they're, they're randomly positioned. There's no sort of rhyme or reason on right or wrong on that. Just so that you're happy with the way it all looks. 
and I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to iron those in place now. Now I've just got a dark grey thread in my sewing machine. I'm just going to use one colour for everything. I don't uh, want to change colour and I find that if I use a, it's not a super dark colour but a strongish colour, um, it helps outline things so that you can see things a little bit better. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine now. I'm going to drop my feed teeth out the way. I've got my free motion foot on. And so I'm just going to start, so you want to not, not stop and start too many times. However, because we've got these little triangles in here, we probably do need to stop and start unless you wanted to do some sort of decorative stitching in between, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to stop and start. But other than that, I'm going to go around the, tr the tree trunk and then I'm going to skip straight onto the green and come all the way around and then I'll do all the triangles separately. Um, so just a little bit of free motion stitching, it's fun to do. Stitching on the applique shape but just close to the edge. working with small bits so I've just skipped onto the green. You can turn the work around so that you can more easily do this free motion work. If you're working on a huge quilt it is a little bit harder to keep turning your work. So I'm going to go ahead now and finish off my green and then I'll come on to the triangles. So I got a bit carried away and I've just got two of these triangles to do. So when you start with the free motion, I should just mention, I just do two or three stitches on top of each other and that locks it off. And then I can start moving the fabric forward and sideways in any direction I like. The stitching is going to be fairly small because you're concentrating. And then again, just a couple of stitches on top of each other helps lock it off at the other end as well. And then I'm just going to go now because I'm stopping and starting for each triangle, I'll just go on to the next one. So just lock off a little bit and then move around. And that's that done. Because I've locked off, I can just trim those threads, which is great. So on the back, you can see that I've done all my little stitching and I've just got some little ends of thread which is fine you don't want to be worrying about those on the back. I'm just going to give that a little press and I'm pretty happy with that little tree already. It's looking pretty exciting. So that was block one of our tree appliques. I'm just going to pin this up on the wall. We're going to watch our forest grow each day. Thank you. So if you're looking for more information, please go to gourmetquilter.com and this was 2020 Tasty Treats.